So now let's go to the statement of activities, right? Um, so all of that conversation was around statement of financial position or the balance sheet. So the statement of activities, this is really probably the report that most everybody looks at most of the time. And this is what your revenues are versus what you spent, the funds that you've earned or have been donated, and then the, the money that you spent. So one of the things that we want to look at when you're analyzing this is analyze your different streams of revenue, how diverse is your revenue stream. This is something that Gene Bell's book talks about a lot is how do you diversify so you're not overly reliant on any one funder or overly reliant on any one program. And then same thing on expenses. What are your major expenses? You know, where are they flowing? Um, are we allocating our money uh, in the healthiest way? So the statement of activities, um, you can see here you have contributions or support, you have earned revenue, um, other types of revenue, this is, tends to be small numbers, if you have money from investments, uh, those types of things. Personnel related expenses, uh, side note here, 75% of the money in the nonprofit sector goes towards personnel related expenses. So that overwhelmingly the bulk of the money that comes into nonprofits gets spent on people. Um, and that's always a, you know, that's the biggest area to sort of look at. There's non-personnel, that's rent, office supplies, that sort of thing. Non-GAAP expenses, this is a very rare um, exception uh, that does come in with nonprofits, but it, it probably affects one out of 200, so it's not something to worry about. So the key metric here on financial analysis Change in net assets. So net assets, again, in the in the nonprofit world is basically a change in profitability, right? So you just look at period one. So in 2012, we made $30,000. In 2013, we made $20,000. So we, we had a $10,000 shift, right? So you want to look at that change, basically just to, to trend it over time. Savings indicator, this is similar to the month's cash on hand. You're looking at are we are we adding to our cash balance? Are we make are we getting a healthier, safer position, or are we taking away from it? Sometimes organizations strategically say, you know what, we're gonna go in the hole for a year, or we're gonna go in the hole for two years because the need is so great we have to do this now, or we we're gonna we're gonna go in the hole and we're gonna build this program. It's gonna cost a lot to start it, but over time we think it's going to be healthy. If you are have a savings indicator that's less than zero, so you're spending, um, you know, you're digging into your savings, you can't sustain that over time, right? So, but it's okay to strategically, intentionally do this from time to time. So again, back to our uh, Jatasa Justice here. You look at their revenue, um, individual contributions. 112,000 special events, 144,000. So, um, you know, perhaps not as diverse as you might like it. And then again, you see their expenses. You know, the bulk of it is in contract services, which again, in this example, was subcontracting to people. So you look at the revenue. You say, well, is there an opportunity with this organization? You know, could they pursue grant funding? Do they want to pursue that funding? Um, there's different views on that, but you could at least ask that question. Um, their special events income is really high uh, as a percent of the for the entire company, so that might make the organization a little nervous um, if the events, you know, don't sustain that momentum. What are the expenses? You know, again, here nothing surprising. There's nothing that's really out of whack. Um, you might want to dig in a little deeper into the contract services and just see if there's places to save there. But in general, you know, they spent less than they made. They're putting more and more money away. That's, that's healthy. So then let's look at this, you know, the first half of 2012 versus the first half of 2011. Let's kind of compare the trend lines. And you look and you see their revenue is actually dropping. And again, most of that drop was in the special events income. So that trend makes us a little nervous. Um, and then when you look at the uh, the expenses, you know everything pretty much stayed flat. There was a slight increase, um, but generally flat. So 
But because of that special event income dropping, you see the change in the net assets at the bottom. It actually swings about $25,000, which is 10%. So for an organization of this size, that's, that's pretty significant. Um, and you know, that, that's what we would want the organization and the board to really dig into and discuss. Hey, Jeff, I have a question. This may be a, a context answer again, but here we did um, a trend line analysis. We did year over year. We did first half of 2012 compared to first half of 2011. Mm -hmm. Like, can you give some? Can you talk about like when, when it's appropriate to do year over year versus like quarter to quarter? So maybe first half, first quarter this year versus second quarter this year versus third quarter fourth versus the same period year before. Yeah, that's a good question. So for younger organizations. I generally encourage them to just look at, you know, the trailing 12 months or the trailing four, you know, four quarters, um, because the year-over-year -year data may be so different. So my wife runs a nonprofit that's about three, four years old, and every year they're reinventing themselves. So the year-over-year -year data is not all that interesting, but looking at what they're doing now versus what they were doing four months ago, six months ago, that those trend lines are really interesting. So generally, in an example like this, where we're looking at year over year, um, it's typically for really mature organizations who have a pretty well-known um, uh, pattern, or in the case of Jitasa Justice, it's for when there is a um, known highly seasonal activity. So a lot of nonprofits, they make all their money in the fourth quarter. You know, it's around the, the giving season, Christmas season. So looking at the first quarter of the year versus the fourth quarter of the year doesn't make a lot of sense from a donation standpoint. So it's just um, takes a little intuition to kind of know uh, what to look at. And, you know, when in doubt, run a couple of different reports and see which one makes sense.